Hello viewers and students. Today we will study first law of thermodynamics. Now starting from the statement and we have quite a number of statements regarding first law of thermodynamics and the very famous and the very first statement is energy can neither be created nor destroyed. But uh, uh, this statement is uh, somewhat uh, in some sense is not a universal statement and uh, what uh, which statement is one of the most uh, fabulous statement regarding first law of thermodynamics is this second one and this is very uh, i like this statement because it it gives the very clear picture regarding the first law of thermodynamics and it states that energy cannot be appear from nothing nor it can be converted into nothing now the difference between these two statements you can see that in this statement you say that energy can neither be created nor be destroyed but anybody can ask a simple question then if energy cannot can neither be created then how it is being created in sun and it is being created in sun on the day-to-day -day basis and that's why that is this second statement clears more universal way of understanding first law of thermodynamics that energy cannot be appear from nothing nor it can be converted into nothing which means that you cannot create nothing energy from nothing so there is something from which this energy is being created in the sun and we will see what is that thing and the another the last statement which is very simple statement total energy of an isolated system in all its forms remains constant now regarding mathematical proof of the first law of thermodynamics and the important point regarding this is the first law of thermodynamics cannot be proved mathematically but its validity stems from the fact that neither it nor any of its consequences have been contradicted so it is a universal law it uh, it's similar to the universal law of gravitation so its validity stems from the fact that no, neither any of its application nor any of its corollaries have been contradicted now we should also discuss the very background of first law of thermodynamics because from where it has uh, originated and uh, we should also know the very history of uh, this the whole concept of first law of thermodynamics but uh, at the time of newton there was no concept of energy and this is very important people don't know this because at the time of newton there was no concept of energy and the only thing was in common among scientists was forces of so they were just considered uh, concerned about the forces of nature and therefore in his and researchers only to know only two things which are force and momentum force you all know that for everything they know that for every motion they know the responsible thing is the force and when we have a motion on a, having a mass and a velocity then there is a momentum that's why you will find the law of conservation of momentum you don't find any law of conservation of energy and that's why you don't find any equation of energy in newton's equation newton has done a variety of work in physics but you don't find any equation which tells about the energy so there was only force and momentum now from the very background you will find some very famous name here and uh, it all started in 1747 with the uh, emily du chantelet the first person in history to introduce the concept of energy not the name of energy as of such and to quantify its relationship to mass and velocity which was called at that time as a living force i told you earlier so they were only concerned about the force so said so she named this as a living force as an mv square based on her own empirical studies so it was emily duchand lay a lady and she come to the conclusion that living force should be called as mv square then came a very famous name thomas young we all know that young's double slit experiment in 1807 and he named this living force mv square as an energy now you can see that this is not the correct formula now the formula has been uh, been modified from uh, from that time to this time and uh, it was uh, in 1829 with corellis defined the work and redefined living force as half mv square so the, it was a uh, corellis uh, who called this mv square as half mv square he corrected he modified the formula from mv square to half mv square so it was thomas young who named the very first time the living force as an energy in 1834 clipperon gave full credit to sadi kono of his 1824 theory of heat engines in his book so uh, it was all 
going through in these years and finally in 1845 Joule studied the nature of heat and discovered its relationship to mechanical work and this in turn led to the law of conservation of energy and which in turn led to the development of first law of thermodynamics. So finally it was Joule who saw all these things and that's why his name is being still associated with the energy as a unit of energy in a standard international unit. So his work led to the development of first law of thermodynamics. So this was just a brief background regarding the first law of thermodynamics. Now finally we have to drive the equation of first law of thermodynamics. Before driving the equation we must know some basic definition uh, starting from system. The part of the universe under observation is called a system. The rest part of the universe is surrounding and when a state can be defined as the when all the property of system has a definite value then the system is in a definite state and suppose we have a gas and we, we know the values of pressure volume and temperature then uh, it is at one state and if we increase the pressure or temperature or increase the volume then it is at another state regarding process when the path connecting the change of the system uh, is specified then it is called as process and the complete description of process is called as path. So we must also know state, process and path because these are being used to drive the equation. Now I have shown here one uh, figure to understand the system and surrounding and we have a cup and a tea inside uh, since we are observing the tea. So this is our system and the cup itself is a system bounding and the rest part of the universe a living tea is surrounding. So beginning with the proof of uh, first law, so we have pressure volume coordinate system here and suppose we are changing state from point 0.1 to point 0.2 having a path A. So we can do with, uh, we can go from point 0.1 to point 0.2 with different paths. Suppose this path is path A and uh, we can return with path B here. So point from we are returning from point 0.2 to point 0.1 again coming on the same point with path B. So you can see that uh, there is a complete cyclic process. A cycle is being completed here. And we have gone from state 1 to state 2 with path A. And we have returned from state 2 to state with path B. Now one thing is uh, very important while choosing the path for a thermodynamic process. So you cannot uh, do like this that you, you go from path B from from state 1 to state 2 you go from path B and return from state 2 to state 2 with path A. So this is not the correct way of depicting first law of thermodynamics and it is wrong and this will violate the first law of thermodynamics. So there will be some interaction of uh, heat and work. So in both the process we will have some interaction of uh, dq and dw. So coming to this point and for a cyclic process we know that sum of all heat exchange is equal to sum of all work done so you can see for a cyclic process dq equals to dw which means that uh, if i have added some amount of heat uh, or increases the temperature or pressure the point the state from point 0.1 to point 0.2 and in the meantime some work is being obtained or done on the system and returning on the same point so i have to remove that heat and work should be done uh, by the system. So in that in the whole scenario you can see the all the work network obtained will be at the expense of net heat exchange uh, from the system. So so we, we, we will use this uh, equality which is itself the first law of thermodynamics. We use this equality and drive the final equation of first law of thermodynamics. So coming from uh, you can see here that uh, just uh, just arranging the uh, terms I, I go from point 0.1 to state 1 to state 2 with path A having the heat exchange with DQ and returning with path B from um, uh, 2 to state 1 with path B having exchange heat uh, of DQ and again the work exchange will be from uh, path A and path B will be the DW there will be complete equality of heat exchange in a cyclic process to the network exchange from the system to the surrounding and we can do for the same thing for path C and part B which means that we can 
go from state 1 to state 2 with path A and we can return from state 2 to state 1 with different path, path B and path C and path D and this equality will hold in all the path in all the cyclic process. Rearranging the terms again the sum of all heat action is equal to sum of all work done and just rearranging the terms we can see here dq minus w from path A and d minus dq minus dw from path B equals to 0 and changing the path returning path which I have we have already seen from B, C and D. So we all get the three equation here. So finally rearranging the terms we get that from path B, path C or path D which for different path returning path we find that dq minus dw in either cases will be equals to 0. So uh, throughout the, thus the different dq and dw throughout the different path is always constant quantity and it is a property of the system. So since it is always the constant quantity and doesn't depend upon the path, it depends only upon the initial and final state. So we can say that it is a property of system and we can write as a de. It may happen de equals to 0 in that scenario. dq will be equals to uh, dw. So where E is the energy of the system and it is the intrinsic property of the system. So it is independent of the path and depends only upon the initial and final state. So E doesn't have to do with the path B, C and D in each, in each path. This will be equal. So whether you go from path B, whether you return from path B, whether you return from path C and path D. In each cases, this will be DE. Just defining the energy of the system in more elaborative way, you can see. We can write delta e equals to delta q minus delta w and d equals to dq minus w. And again, the difference dq minus w is constant quantity and irrespective of the path. And it only depends upon the initial and final state of the system called as the energy of the system and it is noted by E. And hence, it is a property of the system. So continuing with the energy of the system, uh, you can see the energy E includes all forms of energy in the system. It, can, it includes all the forms of energy and it can be written as E equals to microscopic forms of energies plus macroscopic forms of energies. Now, what are microscopic forms of energies? It is normally denoted by U and it is associated with the molecular motions. It can be rotational motion, it can be linear motion, it can be vibration motion. So, all forms of molecular motion, the energy associated with the all forms of molecular motion is said to be microscopic energies and it is normally denoted by U. Now, Macroscopic energies are the energies which you can see with your naked eyes or which you can feel which is the kinetic energy of any body, potential energy, chemical energy, electrical energy, magnetic energy. So therefore we can say that energy of the system is the sum of microscopic form, forms of energies plus macroscopic forms of energy. So this is very important regarding the energy of the system. So just continuing with the energy of the system, therefore we can write E equals to U plus kinetic energy plus potential energy plus chemical electrical and magnetic energy. So this all from kinetic to magnetic energy are macroscopic form of energy and U is the microscopic form of energy and U is called as internal energy of the system and this U is associated with the molecular motion of the gas or the substance. So this U is very important for us and we will discuss in the next slide and it is the internal energy of the system. Now coming back to again internal energy which we were just discussing in the last slide. So internal energy U is nothing but associated with the molecular motion of the gas and for an ideal gas, for an ideal gas U is the function of its absolute temperature and as we all know that energy of this kind is called as internal energy or intrinsic energy or microscopic form of energy. So U is the function of its absolute temperature and we will find that U equals to MCV delta T. Delta T is the change in its of its absolute temperature. So this is very important. You must know the internal energy is the fun for an ideal gas. Internal energy is the function of its absolute temperature. Now in the absence of all forms of macroscopic energy, that means kinetic energy, potential energy, electrical energy of the, of the macroscopic form, then E will become U and therefore we can write delta U equals to delta Q minus delta W or we can also write DU equals to DQ minus DW. So this is again very important in the absence of macroscopic form of energy that if you are not moving, you don't have any potential energy, you don't have any electrical energy, you, do, you don't have any magnetic energy. So in that case, E the, which is the energy of the system will become equals to U. Here E is the energy of the system 
and u is the internal energy now the final equation of first law of thermodynamics will be delta q equals to delta u plus delta w or dq equals to du plus dw so the important point here is that we have replaced delta e we have replaced delta u uh, from delta e so we have replaced uh, we have replaced del the important point is that we have replaced delta e from delta u so there is no delta e here because we have assumed that all the macroscopic forms of energy are zero or they are not present so just uh, have an example that you you are working in a laboratory on on some compound so in that case the all the macroscopic form of energy will not be available and the compound atomic energy or the energy of the if molecule will only be available so in that case the first law of thermodynamics will be delta q equals to delta u plus delta w